I made the blinking fighter jet hair clip for Coffee Secret Santa, and this is how I designed and made it. Everyone knows the deal. Names go in a big hat, and everyone sends someone a gift. This shouldn't be a big deal, right? One tiny problem. Coffee has a lot of crafty people and artists, and I'm a dev guy. What am I going to make for a writer? Some interests are given as a hint. Buying a nice pen or letter paper is lame, because creation is the whole point. I don't crochet, but I love cute amigurumi stuff. But she likes hair decoration and a dancer. I am surprisingly familiar with ballrooms, and I know from experience. A fair amount of glitter is used, and flashier is better. So a shiny beacon to draw attention and as a hair decoration, but what theme? Top Gun? I don't want to put a runway light on someone's head, but something else. Even fighter jets have some lights, so let's make an F-14 Tomcat hair clip. I'm not good at drawing, so I had to grab an existing image. We will need the outlines, because I want to make the PCB look like a plane, not just a rectangle with a drawing. Also, full color printed PCBs exist, but the silk screen usually supports only a single color. We will have to draw the most iconic features. All the wings, the cockpit, and the markings on the wings. CAD tools are able to import simple photos, but the resolution can be an issue. Experimentation and fine tuning is necessary. I had to make the lines thicker, otherwise some details went missing. Using this improved image, a complex outline can be drawn. The shape is symmetrical, so I only draw one half, copy, mirror, and stitch. We can see a 3D preview of this PCB after these steps, and it's getting there. The first import was terrible, no matter how big the resolution was. Luckily, importing the plane marking separately and resizing gave a much better result. They are handled as separate objects like Photoshop layers, so I could use the failed import to help align them, and of course, add some LEDs to the PCB. I decided to have one in the front, two on the wings, and two for the jet engines. That's plenty in this case. And now, switch to the technical part. How do we make it work? This must be battery operated, and it is a huge issue. It can't be heavy or big, must provide enough power to operate for at least a day, and it would be good to be replaceable. In many embedded systems, we don't care about the battery voltage, while it's over a threshold. Because a voltage regulator provides a stable output voltage. Voltage regulators use a transistor as a valve, an adjustable resistor. If current flows through a resistor, voltage drops, so we can have a lower voltage on the output. This adjustable resistor is continuously adjusted to match the voltage, so if the load changes, the voltage will be the same. Unlike switching power supplies, input and output current is practically the same, so we can measure the operating current and make assumptions based on that. This is the reason why we usually calculate operating time based on the amp hours. Microcontroller manufacturers give you some hints about their current consumption. Battery manufacturers usually provide their capacity in amp hours and milliamp hours. Roughly speaking, one amp hour capacity means the battery can provide one amp for one hour, 100 milliamps for 10 hours, or 10 amps for 6 minutes. This is just an estimation, because higher discharges cause higher losses inside the battery, decreasing the capacity. Also, some battery types are designed for long use with small discharge. Coin cells are guilty of having low capacity and low discharge current. They are tiny after all, otherwise they wouldn't fit in your watch or remote. Their main advantage is their availability and price. You can buy a CR2032 or LR44 at almost any store, and I selected CR2032 as a starting point. A CR2032 is 20mm in diameter and 3.2mm high, that's small enough to fit on this PCB's end. Their capacity is somewhere between 200 to 250mA, and their discharge current is only a few milliamps. Their operating voltage is somewhere between 2 to 3 volts, enough to overcome most LEDs for valve voltage. Now let's do some calculations. An average LED needs 10 milliamps to shine bright, we have 5 of them, so if it's always on, that would require 50 milliamps, and it would deplete even the best battery in just mere 4 to 5 hours. The average battery can't even supply that much continuous current, so we must do something. 
plane lights are not always on, they are flashing. If we just flash these LEDs, we can significantly decrease the average current consumption and even increase peak current without an issue. Changes and flashing lights are more attractive anyway, and we can use it to our advantage. If our LEDs are only on for 10% of the time, we could easily increase the operating time up to 40 to 50 hours, and with 1%, we can achieve hundreds of hours in theory. This also eliminates the current limit problem. We can easily get 10 mA current for a few milliseconds. And to help the battery, I added a bunch of capacitors. We could have used a supercapacitor instead of a battery, but the chemical energy storage has much higher energy density than electrostatic storage devices like capacitors. They complement each other. The capacitor can release its energy much faster when it's needed, and the battery can then slowly replenish the energy from its relative huge reserves when the LEDs are off. To put in perspective, we would need a 900 farad capacitor to replace this battery. I drove two 500 farad 3 volt capacitors next to a CR2032 Infusion 360. I think now you'd understand why we don't use them here. Also, the price difference is huge. I used three different capacitors in my design because bigger capacitors start to behave like batteries. They can store more energy, but can't react as fast as the smaller ones. The 4.7 microfarad cap is the big storage, the 1 microfarad is the intermediate one, and the 100 nanofarad is to filter high frequency spikes. Placing a 100 nanofarad capacitor next to each integrated circuit's power pin is an old practice, and a quick fix for a lot of power related problems. But why do we need this sophistication? Just build a simple flasher circuit with the mighty 555, right? Well, things get complicated fast. One dual flasher circuit where two LEDs blink requires two additional resistors and a capacitor too. That's three 555 ICs, six resistors and three capacitors. All of these can be replaced by a single microcontroller. Not because of the cost, a 555 starts from a few cents but a microcontroller adds flexibility and less parts to work with. A 555 needs a lot of fine-tuning, and really limited compared to a microcontroller. I can write a complex pattern in code in mere minutes, while changing the blinking frequency on an analog circuit requires soldering and physically replacing components. Also, 555s need at least 4.5 volts, that requires two coin cells to double the voltage, so I decided to use an add tiny microcontroller. Once I got a bunch of them for free, but it seems I lost them because I couldn't find any. So I ordered some at any 24 A's. They are nothing special, except they can operate from 1.8 volt. It means we can use all the energy from the battery, but if the battery is dying, the output voltage can fall below this, triggering a brownout reset in the microcontroller. If we add all these capacitors, we can delay the inevitable and provide a much more stable voltage to our microcontroller. Last but not least, with this setup, I can avoid using a voltage regulator. Again, not because I couldn't afford one, but for fun. Sure, the LED brightness depends on the voltage, and now it fluctuates between 2 and 3 volts. But this way, we can use a single 3 volt battery instead of 2 and we need to minimize the size and maximize operating time. Also, forgot to mention, voltage regulators need some headroom during operation. This range from a few hundred millivolts to over a volt. This means we can just make, for example, stable 2 volts from 2.3 volts, losing a lot of capacity. So we have to swallow the bitter pill, use the battery directly, and accept the brightness difference over time. All remaining tasks are drawing the remaining traces, assembling, programming, and fine-tuning the flashing pattern. This was the most complex PCB shape I ever made, and I am really happy PCBWay made it without charging extra. They even sponsored this project, thanks for helping. PCBWay is more than just a PCB manufacturer. They make flex PCBs too, stand steel masks for applying solder paste. They also offer CNC machining and 3D printing too. I wasn't sure about the resistor values, so I ended up ordering the plain PCBs, but they could do assembly too. If you don't have all the tools for doing SMD or more advanced stuff, or simply don't want to, the PCB assembly service can do it for you. It can save a lot of time. Thanks again for sponsoring this project, and I was really satisfied with the results. I was afraid that some details will be lost, but <laughs> look at the quality. 
My honest reaction was this. You can check it in the Maker Corner Discord server. The link to join is in the description. After assembling the PCBs with different colors, programmed the firmware and tested each one. But this is just a flashy PCB, not a hair clip. The two holes in the middle are there for a reason. They are the mounting points. I got some hair clips, drilled the hole in them and riveted because a screw may come loose over time. Now it's finished and there are four different sets Rebecca can choose from. It was really fun to make this, but in the meantime, I got my package too. I am really thankful for getting really cool stuff. Truly, there is no place like Earth. Indeed. Thanks for the chocolate too, but sweet stuff don't last too long here. They tend to disappear really fast. Also, I mentioned that I like crotchet stuff and I did get this shy little guy. It really didn't want to come out from the box. Link to Marie Lou's crafts is also in the description. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.